This is the tangent function tutorial. The tangent of an angle results from the coordinates of a point on a line tangent to that of the unit circle. And these are the properties of a tangent function. Now first I'll show you what a tangent function looks like and then we'll discuss the properties. So I'm going to first bring in that unit circle that we referred to and the definition of the tangent function. Now like we said, the tangent of an angle results from the coordinates of a point on a line tangent to that of the unit circle. So for this demonstration, I'm only going to use all the coordinates in the first quadrant of the coordinate plane. So I'll go ahead and get rid of everything else here. Next I'm going to draw in two lines that are tangent to that of the unit circle because like we said, the tangent of an angle results from the coordinates of a point on a line tangent to that of the unit circle. So what we want to do here is draw in an angle to refer to. So I'm going to go ahead and create a 30 degree angle in standard position. Now you know how to find the values of this point right here on the unit circle. I'm going to teach you how to find the tangent value to that line. So the value of that point on the unit circles, you know that the cosine is the x-coordinate, so root 3 over 2, so the cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, and the sine value of 30 degrees is 1 half, that's the y-coordinate of that point on the unit circle. Now the tangent is actually this value in purple here, that purple point over on the line right here, that line tangent to the unit circle. So the tangent value that we're looking for isn't even on the unit circle here, it's on the line tangent to that of the unit circle. Now obviously, since that line is tangent to the unit circle, the x value of that tangent point is going to be 1. Because any line that is tangent to a circle like that, as it intersects the circle, it intersects it at a 90 degree angle. So it's going to go straight up from that x value of 1. So we know that our x coordinate of that tangent point is 1. And the y value of that tangent point can just be derived by dividing sine over cosine. When you do that, you can take a look at our sine value here, which we knew was 1 half. We're going to divide that by the cosine value, which was root 3 over 2. Now that value, if you put it into a calculator, is 0 0.577. That's the equivalent value if I just drew a dashed line directly over here to the y-axis, we would have gone vertically up 0.577 units. So that's the y distance here traveled when that 30 degree angle in standard position intersects a line tangent to the unit circle. So that's where we get the idea of a tangent function because we're talking about a line tangent to our unit circle. So the easiest way to find that tangent value there is to just divide the sine value of that angle in standard position by the cosine value of that angle in standard position. So for example, let's find the tangent of a 45 degree angle now. So our 45 degree angle drawn in standard position is going to look like this. We're going to draw one ray of that angle in standard position along the x-axis and it joins the other ray at the origin of our graph here, so that vertice occurs at the origin, which makes it an angle in standard position. So here's our two rays, and we want the tangent value. So if that ray were to continue on, we want the value here as it intersects a line tangent to the unit circle. Well, we obviously know that the x value of that is 1, because it's on that tangent line. Now to arrive at the y value, all we want to do is take the sine value of a 45 degree angle here, so root 2 over 2, and divide that by the cosine value of that 45 degree angle, which is also root 2 over 2. And you know that anything divided by itself is 1, so root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2 is simply 1. So if you were to put in the tangent of 45 in your calculator, it would return a value of 1. It's just the sine value divided by the cosine value. Now let's take a look at the properties of a tangent function. So the standard tang tangent function is y is equal to a times the tangent of b theta. Now the parent tangent function is simply y is equal to tangent of theta. Remember, there's a difference between the parent function and the standard function here. 
the parent function is just going to be a tangent graph without any transformations. The transformations could occur in that a and b value. That's going to refer to the amplitude and the period in cycles, respectively. So, we know that theta is in radians and b must be greater than zero. The interval of one cycle is from negative pi over 2b to pi over 2b. And pi over b is the period of the function. And there are vertical asymptotes at the end of each cycle. So let's go ahead and look at some problems dealing with tangent functions. In the first problem here, I'd like you to use the graph on the left to solve for each of the following values. Let's begin by solving for the value of tangent of negative pi over 3. Well, we're dealing with a negative, so we're going to go to the left of the origin here. And we can see that this value right here is negative pi. So negative pi over 3 is going to be one-third the distance. So I'm going to go ahead and divide up this negative pi distance to the left of the origin into three pieces. One, two, and the last third piece being that negative pi right here. So I cut it into pi thirds, and we're doing the tangent of negative pi thirds. So if you just travel downwards at this negative pi over 3 value here, you intersect the tangent function right here. Now if I were to travel across to our y-axis here, I'd arrive at roughly negative 1.73. And that's the tangent value of negative pi over 3. If you were to go back and look at your unit circle, pi over 3 correlates to a 60 degree standard position angle. Because it's negative, you'd go clockwise around the unit circle. So from 360 back down to 300 degrees. And if you entered the tangent of 300 degrees into your calculator, you'd get an approximate value of negative 1.73. Now let's take a look at the second problem, tangent of pi over 4. Well, we know that this right here is pi over 2. So pi over 4 is going to be half that distance. Half that distance is approximately right there. So if you were to travel up to where it intersected the graph, and then travel from there over to find your corresponding y value, you'd see that the corresponding y value here is 1. And the tangent of pi over 4 is the same as the tangent of 45 degrees. And the tangent of 45 degrees is exactly 1. So that's how you can use a graph to find the values of a tangent function. Now let's look at another problem. In this problem, I'd like you to determine where two asymptotes occur for the following function and identify the period of the function. So our function here is y is equal to the tangent of 2 theta. I'll go ahead and bring back in the properties of a tangent function for you to look at. Let's begin by determining the period of our function. Now remember, the period of our function is pi over b, and we know that the b value occurs right before our theta. So for this function, our b is 2. So to calculate our period, we're just going to divide pi by b, which in our case is 2. So that's the period of this particular function. And remember, the period is the horizontal distance in which each cycle repeats itself. Now the interval of one cycle is from negative pi over 2b to pi over 2b. So in our case, negative pi over 2 times 2 because our b value is 2, to pi over 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so the interval of one cycle is negative pi over 4 to pi over 4 units. So let's go ahead and draw these in. Here we have our standard tangent function, which is passing through our origin here at 0, and each cycle is occurring between negative pi over 4, right here, and pi over 4, right here. Now our vertical asymptotes are just going to occur at the end of each cycle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, those vertical asymptotes at negative pi over 4 and pi over 4. Those asymptotes are the lines that this tangent function cycles are going to approach but never touch. Now let's take a look at another problem. In this problem, I'd like you to sketch the graph of the following tangent function and the interval from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. 
and our function is tangent of negative 3 over 2 pi times theta. So remember that the coefficient before our theta here is our b value. So for this problem, b is equal to negative 3 over 2 pi. Our period is defined as simply pi over b, so pi over negative 3 over 2 pi. So I'm just going to invert and multiply the denominator of our fraction here, so 2 pi over negative 3, and this becomes 1. So pi times 2 pi is 2 pi squared, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So this is going to be the period of our function, 2 pi squared over negative 3. And I'm just going to put that into a decimal form here. So 2 pi squared over negative 3 is roughly negative 6.6. Now also keep in mind that the interval of one cycle ranges from negative pi over 2b, so over 2 times our b value, which is negative 3 over 2 pi, to positive pi over 2b, so 2 times a negative 3 over 2 pi. So essentially the interval of one cycle in our graph is from negative pi over negative 6 over 2 pi to positive pi over negative 6 over 2 pi. So we again want to just invert and multiply the denominator here to solve for our actual interval. When you do that you see that our interval ranges from pi squared over 3 to a negative pi squared over 3. So this is the interval of one cycle of our tangent function. So now we're ready to draw the graph. Here's so if you plug in pi squared over 3 in your calculator, you'll see that that comes out to an approximate value of 3.3. So our graph is going to range from negative 3.3 to positive 3.3 for each cycle, which is exactly half of that period, negative 6.6. .6. We went 3.3 in each direction. So our asymptotes are going to occur right there at pi squared over 3, so negative 3.3, and 3.3. So we drew those straight lines up as our asymptotes. So just like with sine and cosine functions, tangent functions are easier when you've done a lot of practice. So I recommend going through all the practice problems you can and getting used to establishing what your asymptotes are, your interval cycles, and your periods for tangent functions. Learn how to draw graphs forward and backwards and just practice as much as possible to get through these sections. They're really not too bad once you've done them, but you've got to put a little bit of time into practicing them.